Hi, in this video we're going to cover geometric annuities. Uh, these are very common problems on the FM exam, so you, you need to know how to do these sorts of annuities for sure. Uh, first, uh, let's talk about what a geometric annuity is. It's an annuity in which the formats uh, form a geometric progression. Uh, so what does that mean? That means that, that one payment, to go from one payment to another payment, you're multiplying by the same amount. So uh, on the screen here on this slide, I have that the first payment, say, is X. The next payment would be a 1 plus J times X. And then the next payment would be a 1 plus J squared times X. So these payments would form a geometric progression with the common ratio being the 1 plus J. You might wonder why I'm doing it this way. It's because most of the problems you'll see, I mean, it's kind of odd to, what, to, to say that the common ratio is 1 plus J. I could have just used an R there, say, for, as the common ratio. So the first payment is X. The next payment is R times X. And then an R squared times x and so forth. But I wanted to do it this way because most of the problems will be worded in a way such that it might say that uh, uh, the first payment is a certain amount and each subsequent payment is 5% more than the previous payment. So you'd have the first payment and then 1.05 times x as the next payment, 1.05 squared times x as the next payment and so forth. Or it might say uh, you have a, a, a first payment of some amount and then each subsequent payment is 5% less than the preceding payment. So in this case, the J value would be a negative 0.05. And so you'd end up with a x as the first payment, then 0.95x as the second payment, 0.95 squared x and so forth. Okay, so that's uh, generally you just have to recognize uh, that your payments are forming a geometric progression and you then know that you're dealing with a geometric annuity. Now, there's uh, in order to value a geometric annuity, there's a three-step process. I teach a three-step process. Step one is to value each payment, VEP, at the valuation date. Value each payment at the valuation date. Write it out. Just write out what that sum is. Very easy to do. Step two is to factor out the first term. Once you write that value, once you write that VEP expression out, the first term, uh, every every factor in the first term, you'll be able to factor out of the expression. So factor out the first term, and then step three is to recognize the remaining factor as either an A double dot angle in or an S angle in. So uh, let's go through an example. I think an example will, will help you uh, with that third statement. I'll go through that in 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 some detail. Uh, but after you've recognized that that third, uh, you know, after you've done step three, at that point, most of the time, it's a matter of just using the TVM buttons on your calculator to calculate what, what your answer is going to be. Okay, so let's look at this example. Let's say that your first payment is 10 and each subsequent payment is 10% more than its preceding payment. And you're viewing this, this annuity as, as uh, you want the present value of this annuity due. In other words, you're looking at the present value on a, at a valuation date that's uh, immediately you know, before the first payment there. It's a pre that's the present value of an annuity due. Okay, now let's, uh, let's suppose that we have a periodic effective interest rate of 8% and the question is, well, what's the present value at that valuation date? So step one is to VEP the, the at the valuation date, value each payment at the valuation date. The first payment of 10, I don't need to discount or, or accumulate it at all. Its value is 10. The second payment of 10 times 1.1, I need to discount for one period. So its value at the valuation date would be a 10 times 1.1 times V and so forth. So the expression that I have written down there is the, um, is the VEP expression for the present value at the valuation date. Now, let me make a comment about this part, uh, of this, this one step in the process. Uh, actually, I don't need to VEP every single payment. What I need to know is I need to VEP the first two payments, and then I need to know how many terms there will be in that sum. Well, the number of terms will be very easy. It's the same as the number of payments that you have. Look at the payments in this annuity and recognize or try to figure out, try to, try to come up with a pattern to how many payments that you have. Usually, you can do that by looking at the exponent. For instance, the exponent on, on uh, the, second, the second payment is a 10 times a 1.1. It has an exponent of 1, but it's the second payment. Look at the next payment. It has an ex exponent of 2, but it's the third payment. So there are 28 payments in this annuity. 
So what I really need to do, all I really need to do with that step one is I need to VP the first two payments and then recognize how many payments there will be or how many terms there will be in that sum. So that's, that will, that's all you need in this process. So the present value is a 10 times a 10 times one plus a uh, 10 is a 10 plus a 10 times 1.1 V plus, and I continue that pattern for 28 terms. The second step then is to factor out the first term. Well, in this case, I got a 10 as the first term. Factor out a 10. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I should have, uh, because I'm, uh, I'm going to combine a couple of steps. The V value, recognize that the V value is uh, 1 over 1 plus I, in this case, 1 over 1.08. So I'm going to do a couple of steps, or well, I'm going to do a couple of, of, of arithmetic things here. And when I factor out the first term, uh, I'm going to factor out a 10, and what I'm left with is a 10 times a 1 plus 1.1 V, but that V is a 1 over 1.08, so that's a 1.1 over a 1.08. Uh, so I got a 10 times a 1 plus 1.1 over 1.08, and I've got 28 terms there. And then the step three is to recognize that remaining factor as an A double dot angle N or an S angle N. So let me tell you what I mean by that. Uh, that second factor is what I've highlighted in red right there. And so when I look at that second factor, I, I see that the second term is a 1.1 over a 1.08. That's going to be my common ratio in that, uh, in that, uh, in what's in parentheses there will be geometric. The common ratio will be that second term. It's 1.1 divided by 1.08. I recognize that that's a number that's bigger than one. And since it's bigger than one, I'm going to view that as a one plus I. I'm going to view it as a one plus I. Then the 1 plus the 1.1 over 1.08 and so forth can be viewed as just a 1 plus a 1 plus i plus a 1 plus i squared and so forth all the way up because there are 28 terms. It would end at a 1 plus i to the 27th. And I recognize this is the part. I recognize that as the VEP expression for an S angle 28. So that entire, what's in red there in, in, the, uh, in the PV calculation, 10 times what's in parentheses there, is just going to be an S angle 28 at rate I. And now what's the I? Well, I go back to uh, where I, I'm viewing the 1.1 over 1.08 as a 1 plus I. So the I value would be whatever that R value is minus 1, in this case 1.1 over 1.08 uh, minus 1. And so I'm done. I, I, I use uh, what I've highlighted here in red. I go, I, I, I compute whatever that value is, and that's my answer. Uh, the calculator, let the calculator do the work for you at this point. Now, I do want to make one comment about this because there's some strange things that actually go on with these geometric annuities. So uh, look at what we're actually trying to, to value is a present value. So we've got a present value, but when, we, when, we're, calc when we're using a calculator to, to actually uh, uh, get the numeric value of that, of that present value, look what we're doing. We're, we're, we're using a calculator to get a 10 times an S angle 28 at rate I, and I is the numeric value too. So everything is the same there. What in our calculator will actually be computing a future value We'll compute a future value in order to get what the present value of this annuity is. That's kind of odd to do, but these odd things like that happen when you're dealing with non-level payments, when you're dealing, especially when you're dealing with the, the geometric annuities, these geometric payments. So in this case, I'm looking for a present value. And I'm seeking a present value, and I do that by computing the future value on my TVM calculator buttons. So a little bit odd, but those things happen and just... Do whatever the math tells you to do. In this case, the math is telling you to compute this present value by computing a 10 times an S angle 28 at that rate I there. Okay, let's change the problem up just a little bit. I, I want to do the uh, assemb pretty much the same problem. The payments are going to be the same, but this time let's look at the periodic effective interest rate being 12% instead of an 8% what it was before. And again, I want to know what the present value is at that valuation date. So the step one is to VEP ex each expression. That's going to look exactly the same, uh, except this time the V is going to be a 1 over 1.12. I'm going to factor out the first term. I get a 10 times a 1 plus plus a 1.1 divided by 1.12, and I know that I've got 28 terms there. And then the step three in this, in this process is to recognize that remaining factor, uh, uh, the remaining factor as, as a, um, 
uh, a double dot or an S angle in. Uh, notice that the R value here would be a 1.1 over a 1.12 uh, which is less than 1, and since it's less than 1, I'm going to view it as a 1 over a 1 plus i, and of course that can be viewed as like a, another v value, some other v value. And so what's in parentheses, that remaining factor that's what's in parentheses, I can view then as a 1 plus v plus v squared and so forth, where that v is my new v value, that 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 1 over the 1 plus i. And of course, that's the VEP expression, that 1 plus v all the way up to plus a v to the 27th is the VEP expression for an A double dot angle 28. So then the question is to, uh, or, or then I've got a, a present value of a 10 times an A double dot angle 28. And now the question is, well, what's i? So I go back to uh, the, the ratio R being 1.1 over 1.12. I'm thinking of that as the 1 over 1 plus I. So I take the reciprocal of R and subtract 1 is how I would get the I value from that R value. Take the reciprocal of R and subtract 1. And that reciprocal would be a 1.12 divided by 1.1. Subtract 1 and you've got the I value. So then you've got everything. This one didn't get kind of... Uh, well, it wasn't anything really sneaky on this one because I'm asked to calculate a present value and then I see that the present value in this case is a 10 times an A double dot angle 28 at, an, at whatever that I value is. But when I calculate it or when I let the calculator do the work for me, I'm going to be computing a present value in the calculator to get a present value. So there's nothing really sneaky going on here. OK, so finally, let me spend a, uh, about a minute on uh, geometric perpetuities. Uh, instead of geometric annuities, geometric perpetuities. Uh, remember, a perpetuity is just an annuity that, 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 that goes on forever. And so a geometric perpetuity is a perpetuity in which the payments form a geometric progression. They keep going on forever. These are very, very easy to value. These are easier problems to do than the geometric annuity problems to do because when you're valuing a geometric perpetuity, there's just a two-step process. The step one is the same as before. You're just going to value each payment at the valuation date. And then step two, the five, the, uh, step two is to value the resulting geometric series using, you know, you're going to get a geometric series because it's a perpetuity. You're going to get a geometric series. And the value of a geometric series is always the first term divided by one minus the ratio. Go through that process, and uh, and you'll get uh, you'll you'll get the answer every time. So geometric perpetuities are generally easier to work with than geometric annuities. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.